Okay, welcome back, Zero K fans. Sorry about the delay and all that. And we are now on to round three, and we're going to be watching Kane and Orphelius. I mispredicted, not Clone and Orphelius. I thought it was Clone and Orphelius because of the way it was going, but no, it is in fact Kane and Orphelius, and then Old Ghost Dark and Lowry afterwards. And eventually they will choose their map. So it's somewhere between Avalanche, Darkseid, and Badlands. Darkseid has been out for this game. And... Okay, so Old Ghost Darker. As long as Old Ghost Darker and Lowry do not start their match without me, I am fine. If they do, I will be pissed. So... Oh, never mind. We're going to be playing on Badlands. Now we've got that sorted out. Now, like I said, it's going to be Kane and Ophelius, and then after that, it's going to be Old Ghost Darker and Lowry for basically Tiebreaker. And then... So that will be it. Alright, so we have... Like I said, sorry, I'm getting distracted by trying to run this as well. So, Kane and Rophelius are going to be playing on Badlands. And then once that's done, then... We can have Lowry and, Orf and Old Ghost Stalker, and that will be the final, final match tiebreaker because they are top two and they are both 2-0. They're both undefeated. Whoever wins that gets first place, wins the tournament in a convincing fashion. And whoever loses gets second or ties for second. Not quite sure. And Lowry pointing out that I quite like that format. And I, you know, okay, here's the thing. I've been thinking about what might happen if these tournaments get really big. And what I'm thinking is... If they get big enough that, especially if we started getting a lot of players, I was kind of thinking about how, no, beyond single a limb, like double a limb or possibly Swiss. But yeah, double a limb, I've been thinking about, I realize it actually only adds one more round. It Basically, the very first round being played is not played in parallel with any loser's bracket. So it adds like one more, maybe two more rounds, depending on how the loser's bracket works out. But it's fairly simple. Anyway, because of that, it's it's something that might actually be okay. I might actually not add time too much. I might not add too much time to the overall tournament, and that means that it would actually be nice because it could be a bit more fair and people would have an easier time getting nice set up. But yeah, if we had more players, we might even... Like, say we had like a hundred players, might be easier to do something like having pooled brackets. So you have like 16 or so players, like groups of 16 playing a mini double elimination tournament. And then when that's done, the top two end up going on to the main double elimination tournament. Or you might have a bunch of Swiss rounds. Oh, this apparently is being exited out of. There's some issues with people trying to join because Orphelius, the other player apparently cannot join. Now we can begin properly. But yes, yeah, so anyway, as I was saying, that's what I'm thinking, is that Swiss format has a lot of advantages, but I don't know if it's the best format in general, though it does have some advantages. Like I said before, the weekly Skullgirls tournament uses Swiss to determine ratings and then does an eight, the top eight that have a bracket. 
And that actually works decently well, but it's that's over the course of several weeks. It's a totally different style of tournament. Although admittedly, that might not be a bad idea in general, but yeah, it's over the course of weeks. It's like every week people can play. You don't have to play every week, but every week you play is the week you get points. So you get points for winning. Basically, you're standing at the end. The points that you have at the end as they're listed on the brackets, those get totaled up and whoever's the highest points becomes becomes the part of the top eight and then it goes from there. <sighs> okay, so apparently we're having some technical problems unfortunately with Orphelius. Not entirely sure why. It's rather annoying, but yeah, for whatever reason, we are having technical problems. Terribly sorry for the delays as a result of this. So anyway, yes, logistical issues are occurring, which is rather unfortunate and annoying. But we should be able to get that sorted out quickly enough. Hopefully. Oh, Orphelius might actually be able to get in. We'll see. So yeah, when that happens, then we can finally start this game up. So yeah, as I was saying, tournament formats. So one thing is either you could have like small double limb tournaments that lead into a large one, like pools, or you could have a bunch of like four person round robin type things or Swiss type things, like four person round robin or eight person Swiss or something like that, where it ends up, although I mean like eight person Swiss requires like six rounds to be sure, whereas four person round robin is just three. Anyway, you could do that. You could do Okay, Orphelius is finally connected. Awesome, we're good. We're in. Orphelius has connected. See, so yeah, I came over the northeast side of the map, going for jump bots apparently, while Orphelius in the southwest side of the map hasn't quite chosen the good to go for. Okay, so there have been some minor issues. Here we go. Some minor issues, unfortunately. Yeah, Ophelius, they are sort they're getting it sorted out. We're good. Anyway. Kane has their jump bot factory. Orphelius does not Okay, Orphelius is going for Cloaky Bot Factory. And that should end up with a pretty interesting game. So we have started up on this game. Get the sound going. We have the visuals this time. I apologize to the radio cast last game. <sighs> It happens. I'm sorry. Orphelius going for a couple of metal extractors. Going for very quick, very quick gremlin. Wants to get a scout out early. While on the other hand, Kane going for jump bots. Early freaker going for a very quick construction. Getting a lot of metal really quickly. And Orphelius going for metal very quickly. Going for metal first. Probably should have built a solar collector in between. But overall, that wasn't too bad of a start. Just something I noticed, I was playing the FP bot against Google Frog. Well, the games I cast as FP bots against Google Frog. Google Frog gave me a bit of advice as far as what to do. And pointed out that you don't really need a lot of power early on. Like, it's okay to have power actually go below metal early on, or energy income below metal income. It's just that once you start getting above, like, 20, plus 20 or so metal, then you want to worry about making sure your energy is always above your metal so you can always make use of it, and especially when reclaim comes in, then you really want energy to be higher than metal. But at the start, it's not a big deal. You're kind of saving metal for later. As long as your metal isn't excessing, you're fine. Anyway, Kane going for a fairly quick pyro, while on the other hand, Orphelius just getting that, getting a conjure up, has a couple of glaze up so far, has not, just been using Gremlin to scout. That's all they've been using to scout. Oops, I don't want that. I don't want markers. So the Gremlin, as long as it can avoid getting spotted at all, will be able to watch everything. This is something more players should do, and I'm glad to see Orphelius is in fact doing it. Well, Kane coming in with that pyro, and that pyro just hanging out for defense. 
Norphelius, on the other hand, is getting up more and more glaives. And Cain is getting more and more pyros. So Cain is kind of ahead right now. Because Cain is going for basically a counter. Like, Warrior is coming from Morphelius, however, this is going to be a bit more useful. But even then, that's still going to be tricky to work from. Now, the Gremlin does see everything. Because it sees everything, this pyro, completely known about. Like, we look from Morphelius' point of view. Morphelius knows about everything going on in this factory. Doesn't know much else, but knows about that factory. Knows the pyros are being built. Not sure why they're going for Warriors. Zeus is a bit of a better counter. Warriors aren't bad, though. Zeus is just better. Zeus is also, however, more expensive. So it kind of makes sense. But yeah, it, it's going to be a bit tricky to get that in position. And these glaives, however, they know kind of where they can go. Right? Orphelius knows there are two pyros, or at least knows there is one pyro that has been completed. Might know about both. Going to the southeast and double check, because Badlands, you want to make sure you have the northwest and southeast. Like, one or both, really important. Oh, well, thanks, guys, and I, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's... Technical difficulties are part of being live. Like, when you're doing stuff live, you will have technical difficulties. Especially given that this is an amateur production, and I'm basically doing what I can as a one-person show. Live, everybody! So, anyway, Kane is double-checking the southeast side of the map. Orphelius already checked that out. Left before Kane checked it out. So, Kane doesn't know Orphelius knows nothing's there. But Orphelius probably will try to go over to the northwest side. Neither player really trying to go for these, though. Kane, we're going to the southeast. Orphelius, I don't think, is aware that... No. Orphelius might know the pyros are down here. Not sure. However, it doesn't matter because the pyros... The thing is, the reason this is important, the pyros can do, go from here all the way into the base. Just like this. And Orphelius now spots them on radar, but does spot them nonetheless. The glaives are going back to try to deal with them. Many glaives will die, valiantly trying to defend this. However, there is a nice walled lotus right here. That will get rid of one of the pyros pretty easily. The other pyro should go down to five glaives. And a tick in the... Oh, completely out of position. The tick, if it gets in the right position, however, these pyros will jump into the lotus. Bit of a risky thing to do, but yes, it does work out. And no other lotus is... Built. One was under production, but didn't get built up in time. And this tick, too far away to do anything, stuns out a metal extractor. And at this point, an attack over the center of the map. Warriors are able to do just fine against the pyros. And the pyros in the main base get off a. Get rid of a worker, get rid of a couple metal extractors. Well, they cause a metal extractor to be stunned out thanks to a tick. They get rid of a metal extractor, get rid of a lotus, get rid of a few glaze, but ultimately not the biggest deal. And Orphelius. Able to attack very strongly into the center. These warriors should be able to actually take... Okay, that one's dead. Two warriors can take out a commander, no problem. But with the pyro as supports, a little bit tricky. And especially a level 1 commander with light particle beam is also tricky. It looks like Freaker is going down to the southeast for Kane and Orphelius. Getting the northwest. Orphelius has gotten one of the corner expansions first. Can they hold it? That is the question. But it looks like they're building three lotuses. They are actually a little bit too scared of whether nothing can hold it. They should be fine. At this point, Kane actually has a smaller army, and Orphelius knows it. Although Orphelius does see moderators coming out, which are a bit tricky for the Clokybot lab to deal with. The Glaze will do fine, as long as there are more Glaze. But yeah, it is kind of tricky to deal with. They are quite tough. They are relatively quick. They are skirmishers, so the Warriors are basically out. And the Pyros, of course, Pyro Moderator together, that's hard for Glaze to just... They just die. They do not do a good job, but enough Glaze will be able to overwhelm him. And given that Orphelius does have a larger army, there's like, what is this, one moderator? Yeah, that's about it. It's like two moderators, actually, and one pyro. Sorry, two pyros. The second pyro is... Where the heck is the second? Oh, the second pyro is under production. That's where it is. Yeah, Orphelius, their commander is in a bit of a risky position. I should point out the auto repair system has been changed. What happens is they get 10 healing per second after 10 seconds out of combat. So now Orphelius is out of combat. It should be healing it pretty quick. Yeah, as you can see, that's that's the auto repair right now, but it takes a little while to start up. So you can, if you do a bunch of burst damage on a commander, kill them. But otherwise, they will heal up very quickly. It's kind of like Halo's shield system. Very much like that, actually. It's just You have to deal a bunch of damage in one burst. Otherwise, they will repair completely. That's also how glaives work, in case you were wondering. Glaives work exactly the same way. There's a few of the units with auto-repair, and they work basically the same way. After a few seconds out of combat, they repair very quickly. And these glaives taking out the southeast while the northwest being attacked. Kane setting up some defenders with the pyro in tow. Just to make sure they can get rid of these lotuses. 
The defender's gonna have an easier time, but the southeast is gone. Orphelius takes that out. Kane's still slightly ahead economically, but not by much. And actually, Orphelius, now they've taken the northwest pretty securely. Kane, oh, getting rid of another warrior. Although Orphelius jumping the commander in, very risky shot to do. There are no moderators around. The moderators were out of position, but Orphelius is being really risky here. They've jumped in. Have to wait another five seconds or so before they can jump out. Jumping in is a very difficult thing. Like, do not jump in in general. Jumping in is for jumping out. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And down, co I mean, Orphelius commanders went down a few seconds ago, really. But yeah, that's that's Orphelius commanders down. Orphelius's commander is down because they jumped in. Jumping in is typically a bad idea, but still, even with that, Orphelius is ahead. They're harassing nicely. They have territory advantage. They took out the southeast. They're taking the northwest very securely. And they can continue harassing over through the northeast. It doesn't look bad now, given the stats. But really, Kane is behind. Like, Orphelius has the entire west side of the map. Kane has one solar collector here. I mean, Orphelius can take the southeast whenever they like, and they are basically going in that direction, too. This particular conjurer... It can go over to the southeast. It can take this metal extractor, take these metal extractors. Done. And Kane going to the north, getting that, getting the moderators out. So the glaives come in, and the pyros don't get in in time. So the glaives, the glaives are going to die to the pyros. The pyros force them away, but still the glaives get rid of the moderators, which means the warriors have free reign to come in. Well, until the next moderator, but the thing is, that's known. This gremlin has been here the entire game. It also means that Kane is probably not spectator cheating, or probably not watching the stream and cheating by watching the stream. Because if they were, they would have killed this gremlin by now. It would have been, oh, how did they randomly find that gremlin? Because it's very much out of the way. It's a very good positioning. I, I like that, Ophelius. Well done. So yeah, Kane getting a few more pyros, but these warriors are going to be having a field day. And more warriors coming in. And Zeus, there we are. The Zeus is being built up. First Zeus getting off the factory floor, and it is ready. Pyro's coming in. Two of them are jumping in, which, as mentioned before, is kind of a bad idea. The warrior's able to get, well, get one of them? Get one of them. That's right. That happens. So they get one of them, and the other two jumped out. So ultimately, Orphelius did manage to kill one. Made the same mistake they did, but yeah, jumping in. Generally a bad idea. Jumping is an escape tool, not so much a mobility tool. Or it's a tool in case the map doesn't allow you to pass somewhere, and then your pyros can just pass everywhere. Or whatever jumping in you have can pass everywhere, because they can jump. Not relevant on Badlands, everything is bot pathable. Everything. Oops. Yeah, it's red, no purples. Actually, I don't think so. That was a few purple areas, but basically it's all red. Yeah, it's all bot pathable, so there is nothing that the jump bots can't do. However, Kane does have the caretakers and freakers compared to two caretakers from Orphelius. Yeah, Orphelius is kind of pushing a lot into Zeus's. Now, the thing with Zeus against Pyro is they're really good if you have the same number of each, but it's really tricky otherwise. However, with Warrior as support, that should work out fairly well, especially with the Conjurer here for repair. Of course, the problem is catching up to the Pyros. The Pyros are a bit faster. I mean, Pyros have 3 speed compared to 1.71 from the Warriors, and one point so 1.7 for Warriors and Zeus. The Pyros can move around far more efficiently. However, the Glaives... The Glaives don't have to worry about that. They can just harass! The Pyros, that's all they can do is go down to the south. And the Glaive's going to take out Kane's commander. These Glaives might not, but the Glaive's coming in afterwards definitely will. And even without that, it's just... Kane cannot defend against this. All their Pyros are moving forward, trying to destroy Orphelius' base. But now the flank has been complete. Orphelius is able to take this out, and the Pyros trying to jump kind of away, trying to jump away from the army towards the base. Deal as much damage as they can, which will be a fair amount. They should be able to take care of the Caretakers. Gonna go for the Lotuses first, though, so they won't kill the Caretaker. Might kill a Metal... Yeah, they will kill a Metal Extractor or two, but that's about it. Orphelius is destroying that. Although Kane's Commander survived. But after this, it's basically game. Pyro gets killed right at the end. Smacks into the edge of the map, and that should be it. Oh yes, buildings are not k bot pathable. I'm sorry. The terrain is k bot pathable. Skazi's being a honk again. Anyway, Orphelius now has a bunch of reclaim. They have a field of reclaim to work with. They have 800 reclaim in their territory. Yeah. Wait, what the? Yeah.
Yeah, Parzival, don't spec cheat. No talking. Or if you do, make sure you have the little S thing. The little thing that says S beforehand that only communicates to spectators, you can do that. But otherwise, don't do anything. Just don't talk. Like, that's... Yeah, this thing... No, just don't. And Keen... Okay, with the factory uh, pointing out... Scassi pointing out that the factory could have been killed. I don't know. The... The caretakers certainly could have been killed. Those would have been great targets. And those would have bought Kane a ton of time. Because Kane has about the same... Uh, yeah, about the same metal, about the same amount of build power. So, Kane would have had a much easier time. They would have had to reclaim a bit to get the metal up just to have a slight advantage. But that would have been huge. However, the caretakers not being killed means that Orphelias doesn't have to spend metal and build power on, the, on these. Their factory is still building units at full speed. They... That was probably a bigger deal. Killing the factory would have been huge, but yeah. And yes, normally tournaments have referees, but this is Parzival's first time, so they're a bit... Parzival's actually the one hosting the tournament. Yeah, like I said, they aren't particularly experienced with how tournaments go, unfortunately. So I'm kind of helping. Oh, oh nice! Tick shot! Takes on only one of the pyros, though. But there are follow-up forces coming right behind, and at this point, Kane is kind of going for no pyro left behind. Setting up a flank. Nice bait, though. And Kane... Setting up these pyros to basically flank out everything as they cut, as they crest the ridge, but it doesn't really matter. They do have the high ground advantage, and honestly, the pyros just aren't as numerous. Kane's still pushing quite a few units though, and more ticks coming in. Where are all the ticks? Wow, a lot of ticks everywhere. This map is going to need a really thorough tick bath after this is done. I have to pull them all out. Because this is in this is nuts. I've never seen these many ticks used at once on a map. I think... Okay, Orphelius has stopped building ticks, but yeah, just set up ticks everywhere. Make sure the pyros can't get around. This is a really good strategy, because this means the pyro speed becomes useless. They end up just running into ticks, and the slow units can catch up and kill them. Although even then, the pyros aren't even using their speed. They aren't trying... They're trying to go head-on against the units that basically counter them outright. And yeah, moderators coming in, placeholders coming in, so Kane's getting exactly what they need. Of course, Orphelius knows exactly what they're building. Kane will be countered pretty quickly, but even then, there are glaives. Oh, there were glaives. There are three glaives. Okay, not many. Not enough, unfortunately, but yeah. Glaives. Glaives exist as a thing. And the powers over to the north are... I don't think auto heal. Yeah, they have, they're getting repaired up by a Freaker. Orphelius. Orphelius. Pointing out no sumo. No, there's no sumo. Kane does not have enough money for us. Actually, Kane actually is kind of getting enough metal for a sumo. Kane's actually reclaiming a lot. Where are they reclaiming from? Yeah, they're just rebuilding a lot of metal. Like, just reclaiming a lot. I mean, a lot of this is open for harassment, and Orphelius is doing exactly that. But the moderators are getting in position. However, that's even then not enough. There's so many forces from Orphelius that it's not going to work too well. Placeholders are working okay, as long as the units don't fall into the black hole, we'll be fine. But even then, Pyro's getting killed. I mean, how many Pyro's left? Three Pyro's left. Two Pyro's left. Very shortly going to be one Pyro left, and the moderators aren't going to last too much longer either. Yeah, this is it. Kane throws in the towel, and that is game. Orphelius takes it. So Orphelius gets, well, tied for second. Oops. Now we're going to have Old Ghost Stalker and Lowry. Whoever wins that gets first. Whoever loses ties for second with Orphelius. Or possibly with Clone. I mean, it might be a three-way tie for second place. Not the biggest deal, but yeah. This... The winner will be certain. It'll be one of Lowry or Old Ghost Stalker. All right. Join their battle, and then... Oh, they're in the same battle. Okay, cool. So we'll, we'll have that in just a moment. They need to choose their map. And then from there... We can go on to having... The last game. That'll be it. That'll be the last one. So, hope you enjoyed the tournament so far. Different format. Different... Fairly different all around, but yeah, it's it's been a tournament. <laughs>